threats in the wake of bin Laden's death have spiked. Famine in Somalia. Police pepper spray. Vicious cartels. Cost of cruise life. Societal decay. 65 dead. Tsunami warning. Cyber attacks. Drug war. Mass destruction. Tornado. Recession. Default. Doomsday. Egypt. Syria. Crisis. Death. Disaster. Oh my God. How you feel? <laughs> this is the world we live in, is it not? Or you wake up in the morning and you see good birds chirping outside your window or you pick up the newspaper or turn on the TV and you hear all the negativity that's flowing at you. It's a tough world to live in and we've been living in it for a long time. You know, I have a slide that I show many times where I'll just show the front cover of Time magazine and it talks about the oil crisis, it talks about the energy crisis, it talks about trouble in families, it talks about the stock market crash, it goes on and on and on and on. And then I show the dates and the dates are in the 1970s. And so we've been living in this time when we've just got, you know, bombarded with negativity over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And what is our role in that? What is our role in all of this negativity? What's the role that we have going forward? And so I have a tradition. And uh, some of you also have the same tradition, I know, because I know some of you in this room. And uh, the tradition is that I begin every meeting with a positive focus. And uh, I've been doing this for years and years, and I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have a wife that supports me in this, and she's been doing it even before I came onto the scene. And uh, something that's been uh, very helpful in our family, for example, she will not allow somebody to come home and complain about what happened during the day without first making us share three positive things that happened before we can share a negative. Now, I don't know how you would see that, but I see it as very frustrating because <laughs> when I'm driving home sometimes, you know, I come in and she'll say, how was your day? And I'll start to go, oh, you just, ah, 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 three things. And I go, okay. But what happens after you've shared three positive things? What happens to you? Oh, there it disappears. They kind of forget the negative, don't you? You really do. In our home, we share positive focus. We do it around the table. And one of the things that I've learned, I wish... I have a big family, by the way. We have eight children. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I wish we would have started this, you know, when all of our kids were young. But we didn't start it then, you know. So we have half our kids are absolutely spoiled, rotten, terrible kids, and half our kids are, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but the reality is, as we kind of went through it, I remember the first time I sat down and shared with my children that we were going to do a positive focus. And uh, we got to our daughter, the teenager, and she said, whatever. I was, <laughs> you know, I was in school, what's the big deal, you know. And, uh, but what really happens when you start getting into the habit, and leaders are consistent, when you get into the habit of sharing a positive focus, what happens is that there's a payday. If you are consistent and you continue on, there is a payday that happens, and that's when your child comes to the table and she says, can I be first? Because then we knew that something had happened. There had been a change in that young lady because she actually captured something during the day. She captured something during the day and she held on to it throughout the entire day. And then she was able to share it with us. Now I have the opportunity to be a, a, a coach, a strategic coach. Raise your hand if you've been a strategic coach at some time in your life. Okay, this is a huge group. So then you know, one of my delights, candidly, one of my delights is the very first time that we have a group of executives, business owners, very sophisticated business owners coming in to coach and we do a positive focus for the first time. I look forward to it because here's what happens. I'll say, raise your hand if you've had a positive experience in the last 90 days and everybody raises their hand. Keep your hands up if you can remember it. <laughs> then they kind of like thinking about it. And then I ask them, can you write down five positive experiences from the last 90 days? And here's what happens. They'll start, they'll take it out like that, and I'll see them rub their head. And I'll see them look up. Then I see them take out their day timer and their, or their cell phone, and they start looking at their cell phone, and they start scrolling through the weeks. And they struggle to find five positive things. Some of you will remember that. You struggle to see five positive experiences that happened in the previous 90 days. And I've had it happen more than once that after we're done sharing, I have somebody raise their hand and they say, I can't believe this. I had my first grandson born just three weeks ago. 
and I forgot to write it down. I had somebody raise his hand one time and he said, just six weeks ago, I was flown into Dallas, Texas because I gave $150,000 to my church and they honored me with a Lifetime Achievement Award. I forgot to write it down. I've developed a habit of doing this and I do it with my clients when they come in to where they're expecting me now to have a positive focus before we start anything. If I don't, they remind me. Look at the advantage that I have if my clients are coming to me not thinking about what just went wrong in their life, not thinking about the problems that they had in their life, but actually thinking about something positive before they sit down and talk to me. It's an amazing experience because it opens up the creative lines. They're like, they come in and they begin talking to you about positive things. What a great way to start the meeting. Recently, and I've shared this has been about a year ago, I've shared this with some of you. I had a fellow a client fly in from, uh, actually flew in from Switzerland. And we're sitting at my desk, and I'm looking across from him, and we're talking, and, and I ask, and I said, you know, I have this tradition, and we're going to do a positive focus. And I share my positive focus, which I think at the time was that my, was at my soccer game where my granddaughter scored her first soccer goal. And uh, that was a big deal, and I photographed it. I got her raising her hands up in the air and running and excited, and I got that picture. Even though she kicked it for the other team, it still was, it still was an exciting moment for her. <laughs> So, I shared this with him, and then here's his positive focus. He said, well, just yesterday, just yesterday, he says, three buddies and myself, we got up at midnight, and we hiked to the top of the Alps. And we were there at daybreak when the sun came up. And as I sat there watching this, and I saw the color glisten off the snow, and I saw the lights, and I could see forever. And the sky was so blue, multicolors of blue. He says, my heart was filled with appreciation and gratitude. He said, I felt like I was sitting next to God himself. I was like, wow, Larry, that's a great experience. Have you told your wife about this experience? Well, she knows I was there. What about your kids? They don't even know I was there. So let me understand this. You're sitting here with a new friend in Utah, talking business, and just yesterday, you were sitting next to God. And you haven't shared it with your wife or your children. We move at such a fast pace in this world that we don't capture enough. We just don't capture enough. And we don't share enough. I've concluded that there's only three things in this life. There's only three things in this life that mean anything at all. There's only three things in this life that provide meaning to our life. The first is love. Without love, people start to stop living. They really do. The second is learning. And I'm not sure which comes first. Loving to learn or learning to love. But without it, people start to atrophy. They start to go away. And the third thing is sharing. Because when you don't share, then you start to atrophy as well. You know, in uh, Frankl's book, Man's Search for uh, Meaning, most of you have read that book, but hidden between the lines, and one of the words that he says, he talks about how he could tell when his friends were going to die. And the way he could tell when his friends were going to die is they stopped sharing their food. Now you understand, he was in the prison camp. He wrote this in 1945, after coming out of Auschwitz. And he sat there and he had the very, he had nothing. He said, except the most valuable thing that a human can possess, and that's his ability to think, that's his ability to be able to make choices, to be in charge of his own mind. And that was his meaning. But when his friends stopped sharing their food, within days he knew that they would pass away. Isn't that interesting? So it's those three things and how they work together. So, I have a tradition. And we're going to do a positive focus. Raise your hand if you've had a positive focus in the last 30 days. Okay, look around. Everybody's had it. If somebody's missing one, ask somebody else. They've got extra. 
so you're going to write it down now. You're just going to take a second and just make yourself a note. You don't need to write yourself a paragraph right now. I want you to just think about it. Write it down briefly, very quickly. Positive experience you've had in the last 30 days. Very quickly. It can be personal. It can be business. doesn't matter. Just write it down. Okay. You just love doing that, don't you? I can tell. How do you feel? Okay, now I can start talking. I can get down to the meat, see, because we've opened up the channels. You know, I sometimes forget to do this, and then there's sometimes when I'm scared to do it. Is that scared? Is that a word? <laughs> New word, okay? That's what I used to say when I was little, anyway. But, you know, there's times when the audience intimidates me, and when I get out of my comfort zone. You know, I had the opportunity to speak with Donald Trump in front of 10,000 people in New York. And um, I called my wife right before and I said, I'm skipping. I said, I was looking out there and there was 10,000 people and they're all talking. You know, they got booths set up and everything. Nobody's paying attention. I, and they're not there to see me. I'm just the warm-up guy before Trump shows up, right? And so I'm like, I, and I call my wife and say, don't you dare skip that. I said, okay. So I came out there and said, raise your hand if you had a positive experience. Pretty soon everybody raise your hand. I had, just like this, but imagine 10,000 people doing the same thing that you were just doing. I had to take out my cell phone and take a picture. It was amazing. The energy that came off of that was absolutely amazing. And I've had the opportunity to do it. We did, we did a, um, we've done several in Philadelphia and Hartford and some other places. We've gone in and worked with kids coming out of the projects. And I called my wife and said, you know, these are kids coming out of the projects. I don't know if they can think of anything. She said, don't you dare. So I go in there, and lo and behold, you know what? They were just filled with it. Just filled with positive. I had the opportunity recently to speak at a graduation. It was a graduation of women inside a prison. And I called my wife and said, I don't know about this one. And we got there and they were divided the room up. So they had a big aisle right here. Oh, she said, don't you dare. So she had, had a big aisle right here. And over here they allowed family to come in because some of these women had never graduated from anything. And over here they had the women sitting. And in the back they had the SWAT team because they had the public room. There's the SWAT team sitting there like that with their arms folded. So I said, raise your hand if you had a positive experience in the last 90 days. And I'm like, I hope somebody raises their hand. <laughs> and all the women over here are just like this. And I look over here at the parents and the family, and they're kind of like... I look back at the SWAT team. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, everybody plays in this. So I, you know, it was a standoff, me and them. I said, everybody plays. I'm going to ask you again. And I looked right back at it. We did it again. Same thing. Hands up. Hands slowly up. And I just stood there like this. And he stood there like this. Finally, he goes just like this. Environment changed. Have the courage to do this in your home. Have the courage to do it in your workplace. Get people into the habit of finding the positive things. They don't know how to do it. They're moving at such a fast pace. They just don't. And on our family, I'm so grateful. This is our son. I ran a week ago because of him. He set up a foundation called Wacky, which is Warriors Against Cancer in Kids and Young Adults. And uh, so we all kind of, you know, you have to be a little wacky to run into Goofy. And, uh, but this is the one and only race that he ran in. He was training for a marathon when he relapsed with cancer. And uh, somebody else took his number and actually put it on the wheelchair of his sister who was living with cancer and ran through that race. And that was the very first race that I ran. This was, this race here, he ran exactly, he made the 5K. And uh, they were right at the front of it, and it was so funny, if you watch the video, you can go to our website and you can see the video of it, because he takes all these people are up front getting ready to run this 5K, and then there's Nick in this, what do you call that suit? The uh, Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear suit, you know, and he's just bouncing around and uh, takes off, and he's ahead of everybody, because nobody's going to take off in a full sprint except Nick, you know. But his batteries ran out of power about the 100-yard mark, <laughs> so he settled back down. But uh, we learned a lot from him, you know, I mean, because he lived his life and he went through this period of time when he said he had only three things. One, he would not let the doctors tell him what the chances of survival. He just said, as long as I have 1%, the odds are in my favor. He said, first, the thing, and I don't care what, what you're going through, 
I don't care what you're going through, I believe that if you follow these three things, if you look for these three things in life, you're going to be successful. Number one, you're going to get through it. Number one, what he says, be of service. Express your gratitude by being of service to other people. And that's what he spent the last four years of his life doing. The second thing is always have something big to look forward to. When you have something big to look forward to, you can get excited about it. And the third thing is laugh and have fun. He says that's what life's all about. And he's somebody that really lived that. So when people say to me, this positive focus thing is kind of cheesy, I tell you what, that's just like, I'm telling you. I know, I know the positive focus in our home, inspired by his mother, and by the way that they, the way, the way that they handled that, the way that he handled it, gave him an extra four years of his life. Because when he was diagnosed, it was moving so fast, it was behind his face, this big cancer tumor, that from the time he was diagnosed to 24 hours later, I could see it growing out of his eye. And uh, his attitude is what kept it there and kept it going.